problems, uh, what they're doing is they're going to ask us uh, to find all of the asymptotes. So we need to figure out if there's vertical, horizontal, or maybe even a uh, slant asymptote. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do the easiest, which is vertical, hopefully, right? So to find the vertical asymptote, remember you're going to want to, so I'll just kind of make it over here. So to find my vertical asymptote, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to set the bottom of my function equal to zero. Because an asymptote, remember, is a part that's not defined in your graph. It's something where your graph is going to attract it to. It's attracted to and approaches without bound. I mean, it infinitely keeps on approaching that uh, um, your asymptote, which is like a little dotted invisible line, but it's never going to touch it or cross it. So if I was going to set this equal to zero, I take the cube root of both sides, and I get zero equals x. Or therefore, I can say my vertical asymptote is when x equals zero. The next thing is we'll go and test to see if there's a horizontal asymptote. Now, remember, horizontal, there's a couple things we need to look at your degrees you need to look at of your leading term make sure it's in descending order but first thing you need to is you need to look at your degrees and I'm going to call your degrees a my a and no let's call them m and n okay m and n actually you know what yeah fine so if I have a is less than m all right Let's call, oh Jesus, I'm gonna get real confusing, all right. All right. Let's just say if your top degree, all right, is less than your bottom degree, then your horizontal asymptote is uh, horizontal, so you get a y is gonna equal zero, all right? If your top degree is equal to your bottom degree, then your top um, leading coefficient divided by your bottom leading coefficient is your horizontal asymptote. Here, they're not equal to each other, right? So the last one is when it's greater than there's none. So hopefully that kind of made sense. You know, like I said, I make a lot of videos on this. I don't know which ones you've watched, but I have some better explanations of how to find your horizontal asymptotes. Uh, so you want to check that out. So the last one is it has to be a slant. So to check out a slant asymptote, what we need to do is we need to do long division. We need to divide. See, if you see, since this has a higher degree, we know it's. Uh, we know I can divide my bottom in my bottom function in, or my bottom polynomial into the top polynomial. So I have x to the third over x to the fourth plus x. So x to the third goes in x to the fourth x times x times x to the third is x to the fourth. I subtract those. And I get zero. All right. Now I um, I bring down my x. X to the third cannot go into x, so I'm left with that as my remainder as x over, you know, x to the third. On a slant asymptote, all right. If you can remember a slant asymptote, you're just going to take the quotient without the remainder as your asymptote. So therefore, my slant asymptote is going to equal x. All right, so what I'm going to have to do, let me just make sure I was using that. Um, so my slant asymptote, I'm going to have to draw this line y equals x. All right, so if I can draw that line, this is like my function y equals x. If I draw that as like a dotted line, that's my slant asymptote, and then I have a vertical at 0. Shows there. So those would be my uh, two asymptotes. So that's uh, how you find an asymptote of a function.